Jaber ibn Hayyan, also known as Jibber, was one of the most notable Arab alchemists. He was born in 721 CE in Thus and died around 815 CE in Kufa, Iraq. Jaber is mostly renowned for his contributions to chemistry. He is also known as the father of chemistry. So what were the contributions of Jaber ibn Hayyan? And why is it important to know about those? Let's find out. From about the 7th century to about the 12th or 13th century, Europe was steeped in darkness, the darkness of ignorance. During the Dark Ages, the progress of Western civilization virtually stopped. The knowledge gained by the scholars of the classical age was lost. For nearly 600 years, life was governed by superstitions and fears fueled by ignorance. This is when a light shone, the light of knowledge, the light of Islam. Islam, which started with the word read. This is all due to the Muslims in the Muslim world who were busy gaining knowledge and decimating knowledge. Muslims were busy building universities, building libraries, building hospitals. Books which would have been destroyed because of the age of ignorance in Europe were brought over to the Muslim world and these were translated to Arabic. Thousands and thousands of books were published. People were following the teachings of Prophet Muhammad who had said, seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. Verily, the men of knowledge are the inheritors of the prophets. Seek knowledge even as far as China. The ink of a scholar is more sacred than the blood of a martyr. It was during this time that the great Islamic leader, philosopher and scholar Jafar al-Sadiq was the dean of a university where thousands of students used to come and attend. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq would give lectures not only in the Islamic sciences but also in physics, chemistry and medicine. This is where Jabar ibn Hayyan got his inspiration. He is credited with the discovery and description of many substances and processes such as hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, distillation, crystallization, sublimation that have become the foundation of today's chemistry and chemical engineering. Jabar is also credited with the invention and development of several chemical instruments that are still used today such as the alembic which has made distillation easy, safe and efficient. By distilling various salts together with sulfuric acid, Jabber discovered hydrochloric acid from salt and nitric acid from saltpeter. He is also credited with the discovery of citric acid. Jabber applied his chemical knowledge to the improvement of many manufacturing processes such as making of steel, corrosion prevention, gold lettering, cut dyeing, and waterproofing. Let's talk about one of his major contributions to chemistry and that is distillation. What is shown here is the original alembic that he came up with. Distillation is a process of heating a liquid until it boils, capturing and cooling the resultant hot vapors and collecting the condensed vapors. Distillation was used by a lot of Arab chemists and they all got that technique from Jabir ibn Hayyan. In the modern organic chemistry lab, distillation is a powerful tool. Industrial distillation is typically performed in large vertical cylindrical columns known as distillation of fractionation towers or distillation columns with diameters ranging from about 65 centimeters to 6 meters and heights ranging from about 6 meters to 60 meters or more. The perfume industry has much to thank Jabber for. His techniques of distillation using steam and distillation by itself to extract oils are still being used today in the perfume industry. What we see here is his original alembic at a much bigger scale so we can extract a lot more flowers. So when we go and shop for perfumes we should always remember Jaber ibn Hayyan. One of the major contributions of Jabir ibn Hayyan is the discovery of citric acid. Citric acid is the acid that is found in lemons and limes 
these have particularly high concentrations of the acid. Citric acid also plays a very important role inside our bodies. Citric acid is one of a series of compounds involved in the physiological oxidation of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates into carbon dioxide and water. This series of chemical reactions is central to nearly all metabolic reactions and is a source of two-thirds of the food-derived energy in higher organisms. Jaber made important advancements elsewhere as well. In the dyeing industry, the dyeing of fabrics, he came up with a way to make the color permanent. He did it by adding a mordant or alum to the dyes to dye the fabrics so that the color would not wash away. He came up with aqua regia, a mixture of hydrochloric acid and nitric acid, which is a very strong acid mixture that can dissolve gold. Until that point, there was nothing that could dissolve gold. He also came up with balances, balances that could weigh down to milligram levels, which was just amazing in his time. So how do we know all this stuff? How do we have all this information? After the Dark Ages, when Europe woke up again, a lot of his work was translated to Greek and Latin, and it was used by the scientists in Europe. Later on, it was translated to English from Greek and Latin. What you see here is a book written, translated by Richard Russell, and it was published in May 1678. In the original format, this book is at the Oxford Museum. If you want to take a look at it, it is available in libraries in Chicago in the microfilm format. So when you look at this book, it's amazing to see that Jabber is talking about the nature of sulfur, nature of mercury, copper, lead, tin. All of this is chemistry as it exists today. And then you take a look at, at the book and it talks about sublimation and it talks about calcination to purify metals. It's just amazing work. So why is this important to us? It's important to us because it is our heritage. It is something that we are really proud of. It is something that we should all know about so we can talk to our kids, we can talk to the people around us and let people know the contribution of Muslims to society. But let us not dwell in the past too much. We have to look at the present and the future. What can we do now? How, how is it possible to bring back that golden age of Islam today? People who are responsible for that is you and me that are sitting in this room. What we have to do is go out there and be the best we can be in our field. And that we are the best students in school following the footsteps of the Alibet. The experiments that we are going to be doing today are going to educate us about the contributions of Jaber. Jaber believed in hands-on experimentation, which was revolutionary in his time.